everyone. Let me just get settled here. I am in a close up. Okay. Okay. Welcome in. <clears throat> Hi, Lynn. So you can see I have my brushes out with my paper towel, and this is my 12 by 16 canvas that I'm using today. I think I'll go out just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we're all doing well. <laughs> yeah, happy, to, nice to see you. And my plate, it's kind of a mess, but <laughs> I'm using primary colors. So I use bright yellow, bright red, not the orange kind. Although this one doesn't make too much of a difference and black, white, phthalo blue as well. Oh, thanks. Yep, doing well, doing well. This one's a fun one. <clears throat> and it's good for beginners. So if you're looking for some easy paintings, this is great. I'm just waiting a few minutes as people come in. Okay, yeah, come back. You can pause this video and take your time. You can watch it on replay. So that's the great thing about these live YouTube ones is you can pause and watch later. We don't take them down. No worries. And if there's anybody new, let me know. Maybe you haven't painted with me before. <clears throat> and this is, again, my 12 by 16 canvas. We're just about to get started. Yeah, very shortly, just like another minute or two. This is my bright yellow, bright red, not the orange kind. I always use more of a primary red, black, phthalo blue, and white. If you have anything pre-mixed like green, you can use that. But honestly, it's really easy to make it. And I'm going to show you how to mix everything. It's a nice wash, light background, the pop of colors mostly in the barn and the trees. Oh, well, welcome in. Hopefully you guys have fun. Okay, great. So hopefully everyone's ready. You have your water cup, your paper towel. I have my paper towel. These are my brushes, so I'll just quickly go over my brushes before we get started. So I have my large brush here that I'm gonna be using for filling in the background. Then I have my medium, or it's just like a bright brush. It's a flat one as well, about a half inch. And, um, or number four. Then I have my detailed brush. And if you have a fan brush, you can use a fan brush to do some of the tree work. It's optional, but I thought, why not use it if you can? It's really fun. Okay, so there's a lot of new painters 
and we teach free. I think at least once once a week. I'm doing another one this Thursday. <clears throat> really depends on our schedule. And we have lots of paintings so you can subscribe to. So someone's asking how long this stays on YouTube. Forever. We don't take it down. Okay. Let's start with our large brush. And I'm just, I dipped it in my water and I dabbed it on my napkin. So we have to start with, we're going to start with our background. We're going to start with the sky. Um, you can see it's just pretty simple, long strokes from end to end. You can do a curve. You can go straight across. Then to mix. So I'm going to get my mixing palette. I have a new palette with trees. I was demonstrating trees at one point. Take some black and a nice big scoop of white because you don't want to go too dark at first. I mean, it really depends on how dark you want to go. The darker you go, um, the darker, it's just going to look like midnight. And I'm just going to use that for now. A little dip in my water. Okay, so we're going to start on the top corner. This is my top right corner. See, I'm just doing some soft curves. The water spreads it a long way. Also gives it a bit of that wash background I was talking about, if you really like that look. And I'm going down so I can reach end to end, as you can see from here to this corner, because I'm gonna start going a little bit lighter. Then what you're going to do from here is take another dip of water and then add in some more white, just like that. See, it's just getting a bit brighter, a couple shades lighter. Make sure it's got a little dip of water. Start streaking it across. Just be happy with whatever color you pick. You don't have to make it exactly the same. And the reason we're not going too dark as we go lower down, we do want to show that there's white snow against our background, so you don't want to go too light either. So this is this is generally a pretty good color. If you went too dark, so a little tip, just pick up a scoop of white and then drag it all across everything that's dark. It'll get brighter. So it just gets brighter when you take a scoop of white and you go back over your dark spots. Welcome back, Vicki. Yes, I know you paint with me often. Okay, so let's just go over the beginning step again. And remember, you can, I think you can rewind. You can pause this video, take your time. We're starting with our very large brush here large flat and we're doing a bit of a kind of dark gray not too dark uh, at the top corner dragging it down nice long strokes and then picking up a bit more white to make it lighter as we go so i'm going to put my horizon line somewhere around here i feel like it was it's just a little bit of a hill so from my right just kind of swoop it across you don't have to go all the way across i went about three thirds because we have a barn and a tree you don't need to put it all the way. Okay, and just continuing filling this in. So hopefully you guys have been doing that. And I'll show you how to add in a couple streaks of some blue. If you wanna add in a few streaks like I did in my background, it's kind of nice, it breaks up all the gray. Gives it more of a wintry feel, I think. We're just filling this in and I'm making sure that this gray, yes, it's pretty light, but it's not too light that when you put white on top for your rooftop, you can distinguish that from your sky.
There. Let's add in a couple of streaks of light blue. So all you need is from the corner of your brush, I added a little touch of light or just plain blue, not light blue, but it's gonna make it light blue when you mix it in with your light gray. You can add a little bit more white if it's getting too dark. Right? So something like this, very faint, not too powerful. Again, with the water, water helps blend it. You can just streak some in here and there. And I think this will be good. I think I'll just leave it like this. And I'm washing off my brush when that's done. Okay, so who's with me? Who has finished their sky? Thanks, Carlota. Thank you. So I'm just about to get started on the next step, and I'm just going to tell you what we're doing next. One of the next things that we're going to do is get at the bottom here. We're going to put in some light blue for the snow. You can go more blue. You can go more white. In there, I went a touch more blue, but... Uh, maybe this time I'll add a little bit more white in there. And it's the same large brush. So it's more of a, it's a little bit of like a wash again. You can use a lot of white paint if you want to. And um, really depends if you want it to be really thick or if you just want it to be a nice light coating for where the hills are here. So I'm grabbing this brush again, and then it's so on the side of my plate. I'm putting, so I'm taking my white again, nice big scoop, a little touch. I'm going to take a tiny little touch of blue again, very light. So it's kind of like an off-white. We don't need things perfectly white. The only things I left perfectly white was mostly the snow on on the barn, um, a little patches here and there on the trees. But overall, um, for the snow, we want to have a little bit of depth and not just pure white. So that is good. And someone's asking if this is available. Yes, it is available pretty much forever after this is done. You can click on the same link. You can just search for us in YouTube, no problem. So I'm just starting down there. You can't really see much of a difference, but you'll, you'll notice the difference, you'll know. And so I just did like a few strokes coming in from the side. So that's all we're doing is just up there. And now we're working our way down. So if you add in a touch more of your blue, you can also, if you're not a big fan of too much blue, you can just add it in a little tiny bit of black to give it like a gray blue and it mutes the color. So if you like more muted tones, adding a dot of black will give it a gray blue look, kind of like your sky. And I think that's good for some depth too, some shadowing into your snow, snowy areas on the hills. I'm just doing nice long strokes. And again, I'm going over to about three fourths of the way 
because of the tree and the barn, it's unnecessary to paint there since you know it's going to be covered. So I stopped right about here. I was safe. I'm probably going to have everything stop right around here with the tree and barn, but I went a little bit extra. All right, so I'm going to use the same brush. I don't have to wash it off. And you'll see that I have, so that first hill that we have going on here, if you can just leave it like the blue, you can put a little bit of a dark gray there, which is what I did because I kind of like that look. I think I will put it right around here. Maybe just some bit of that gray color from up top. I just put a streak going across. Then I'm just washing this off again. Okay, so I'm grabbing that off white one more time, doing a bit of a repeat from the top up here. So we did this, right? And we just want to do that. We want to make a nice sharp, you can use more of a pure white or just that off white. You just go right up to that gray to make it look like there's a second hill coming in. And I'm going to drag this all the way across because this hill happens to be the hill that the barn is sitting on. So I'm going to drag this. I'm just going to continue it a little bit upwards like that to the very left side. So it's from end to end. And just like before, grab a bit of your light blue. You can add in a touch of black if you want it slightly grayed. However light or dark you want to go, you can go as blue as me. You can go a little bit more on the white side. And a little bit of water again. Start from your right and just do nice long strokes towards the other side. Just going to mix a little bit more paint. Again, I'm just going over with my gray just to make sure right above this white part of the hill. Touch of black, some white, so that this is separate and you can distinguish it from the one in front. Okay, so I'm going to leave that alone. Just leave it. I'm going to wash this off. So hopefully, pretty easy so far. And we can always touch up on things. You can always touch up on these areas. 
later on when it's a bit more dry too. We will be touching up on the top anyways. We have to make the trees that are coming up here just from the side. There's some trees going about halfway across the distant ones. And then we can, when it's dry, we put that final white highlight along the top of that back hill there. So it looks like it's hiding some of the trees at the bottom. So since that's our next step, let's see who's up to speed with me, who's ready to start those trees. They're very small and very easy, tiny little trees. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my next brush that I'm using, my more medium one, that's the flat bright brush, number four or half inch, that one. It's basically a shorter and smaller version of the large one. And that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use more of the tip of my brush to get more of the pointy tops of the trees. And we're gonna do, we're just gonna do a lot of lines, just up and down, kind of like grass. So let's dip this in the water. And to make our green, we're gonna start with a scoop of blue. You can actually just mix right over top of your light blue, that's fine. Nice big scoop of yellow. So roughly equal parts there. And I have more of a forest, uh, yeah, forest looking green. And then a little dip of black. This is going to, so like a little pea size of black, it's going to deepen up your green, give it more of that forest dark green look. So that is the green I want to use. And I'm just wiping off some of the paint so I don't have big chunks of paint on my brush. I'm just flattening it down so I keep it nice and flat. Then what we can do is we can start with the thick side of our brush, just doing little short flicks coming up. If you go into your white just a smidge, that's fine. That's actually perfect because we're going to clean it up with that white, the snow covering over top. So you don't want to leave a gap in between a white gap from your hill it's gonna look like floating trees. So you just wanna slightly kiss the previous color, the off-white that we just did there. And just go a little bit more than halfway to be safe again, because it's covered by tree and barn. And yes, you can take a little dip of your water. And then after you do that, then you're gonna use the thin side and you're just going to flick it up. Do just a lot, think almost like grass here. Just a couple shorter ones, taller ones. You're getting a variety. It looks like a very distant forest. You can go as tall as you really want to. You can always extend. Yeah, this is a fun one. Thanks. This is good. Okay. So you can add in darker, more black, if you want to make it darker. If you're thinking, oh, it's too green, it should be more darker, add a bit more black. Or you can add in a touch of white on your brush. So if I take a touch of white here on my brush, and you just lightly streak it in. You can get a variety and it breaks up all of that one color green. If you want to go above and beyond and make more details, more depth into the distance here, now you have 
a bit of like a snowy look and different colors of the greens with some lighter and darker hues. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. And again, this, if you're looking to go above and beyond, you can also just lightly tap with the tip of your brush on the ends just to give it a bit more of a spongy, leafy look. Very light, since they're so far away, you can't see too much details. They're supposed to be nice and pointy at the top, but it can give it a bit more of a leafy look instead of just those straight sticks, or maybe it looks too much like grass. So those are some ideas. Okay. And I'm washing this brush off really well. I don't want green stuck in this brush. And while that green is drying, we can't put the snow, we can't put that hill back over top. We have to wait. So while that's drying, we can work on something else. And that something else would be uh, just mostly starting getting our barn outline going. And you can start with a pencil. So if you have a pencil and you'd rather draw it out first, because maybe you're not the best at um, making these kind of shapes and you don't want to wing it with red because red is very pigmented. So we'll get started on that in just a minute. Grab a pencil or just use your detailed brush to draw it out. So I'll show you with my detailed brush because you can see with red paint versus pencil. So this is my detailed brush. Any detailed brush is good. Size zero, size one, size two. Dip it in your water. And you can start with just plain red for now. Also, if you're just using pencil, you don't need to worry about that. You can fill it in when you're happy with it. All right, so the key for this barn is the shape is so we're not used to making this shape and it's, it can be frustrating, but what helps is making sure that when you're going across, so if you have, when you do that triangle top across from it is the other end and the point of where the triangle would end. And then it's basically on top of a trapezoid. So this is flat top on top, just below your triangle, the top, and then it goes out a little bit and out a little bit on the other side and meets down flat across like a trapezoid. So think of it like that as you're painting this. In terms of height, really as high as you wanna go. So I know that my barn's gonna sit right around here. So maybe what you wanna do is go, okay, this is exactly where I want my barn to be. And I have a little bit of an edge, this is the face of it. So I know that somewhere around here is where I want it to end. And I have a little bit of extra space for the side of the barn that you could potentially see, maybe not because there's a tree in the way, but we know what's happening. Gives it some more length. So something like that. And I think the other side, yeah, right around here is pretty good because there's a tree covering it right over here. So let's go up a little bit and I'm not going to go just a little tiny mark. I know that this is the bottom. And okay, so now we can see that this, this rectangle basically, it's not, a, it's not quite a square. It's a little bit more wider than it is a perfect square. So it comes up and I'm going to have it come up roughly around where this horizon point is. Doesn't have to be exact, it's just guidelines, whatever looks right to you. 
Otherwise you can adjust things. You can make it a bit lower to make up for it. So somewhere around here, it's actually turning out to be a perfect square for me today. <laughs> Look at that. Sure, let's just roll with it. It's gonna be a perfect square today. And once you have that square, you're gonna to have to make the rooftop, the top part of it, which is that awkward shape. So it's first off, it's a trapezoid. So it's gonna go inwards on an angle from here just like this and it's going to come up the same height roughly if you can help it and then straight across so this can easily be adjusted your trapezoid this shape here it doesn't have it can sometimes you turn it in too much you can go a little bit more wider. You don't have to have it as inwards or it can be more of a obtuse angle. So it doesn't have to be as angled in. So maybe just make it a little bit taller here. Anyway, so the last part is the triangle and just make your triangle. This is going to give it the height. So something like this, nice and wide. So meeting from this end goes in and just roughly about the middle. So you kind of want it to be in the middle here. When you look at it, you're thinking, okay, that's about the middle. Have it meet right there. And usually when you have that nailed, your barn's going to look pretty awesome. So hopefully that makes sense. You can also let me know that makes sense. If you're watching replay, you can always just skip ahead. And I'm about to fill this in, but I'll show you how I fill it in because plain red on its own, not the best of colors. It depends on your red. So if you have, if you have a special red, <laughs> um, you could have like a crimson red that you can just use right away and fill it all in. It will look awesome. If you have what I have, which is that bright red, it actually looks like a cherry red, more on the pink side. That's a big no for me. I don't want a pink barn. That's not my thing. So I'm going to take a scoop of my red Put it on the side in a tiny, just to start, little dot of black. You can always add more dots until you're happy with the crimson red that comes out of it. So it's a Christmas red. If you have what's called the Christmas red too, just use that as well. But you can always darken it with dots of black. And the other thing you could do is add a dot of yellow. Just be careful. You don't add too much, but you can if you wanted to give it a bit more of a orangey kind of red color. So from here, just up this top part, I'm filling it from end to end. So I want this to be filled in and probably use your smaller brush. This is my large. It's going to not last me very long. So side to side, this is going to be horizontal and then vertical on the bottom part. Touch of water, not too much water though, because... We don't want it to be a wash. We want it to be pretty full. So vertical here, up and down like that. Those are the directions. And it's okay if it looks streaky, that's actually kind of perfect. And the reason is um, streaking gives it a wood feel, a very rustic feel. So you can see in here all the streaks in the barn. 
Yes, let them let the streaks show. It's hard not to fiddle around with this because I'm just so tempted to change the way it looks and make it. I just want to make it a bit wider. So you can use a generous amount of paint to fill this in. It will cover your background pretty well, especially since we left it mostly white. It shouldn't be an issue. Nice long strokes. And let the streaks come through. An idea for streaks too is if you have a little extra black that you wanted to add into your red, sometimes you can give it a little bit some darker streaks here and there for added character. Okay, so if it needs a second coat, you're just gonna wait for it to dry for a minute. Just washing this off. And uh, while that's drying and before you do a second coat, so when you do a second coat, it actually, sometimes with red, like I was saying, it's an interesting color. It, it will hide your background a lot better too. And it will look more deeper red. And you can change your mind on the red if you kind of want to go a bit more darker with the black or if you just, Maybe you went too dark and you just need to use straight red to try to make it more red red. And this is pretty close to dry. It's almost there. Let me know if this is dry for you guys. If not, we can focus on the tree that's just next to this barn. We can do that too, because um, while this is drying for our first coat, you can do your second coat after you do the tree, just in case you get a little bit of an oopsie with the, with the green coming into the barn. But I have a way of preventing that. Okay, so I'm gonna take just pure white with my medium brush and it's been cleaned off. This is where you can just use a nice generous amount. Just blob it in there, just cover the bottom of those trees and now voila, it looks like you have a keeping pile of snow right in front overlapping. There, cleans it right up. And now we can work on the evergreen next to the barn. So anybody have difficulties with trees or looking for new ways to make trees? If you have a fan brush, you can pull it right out. You can just use that and practice maybe on the side first or switch to your, well, use the same brush, the medium. And we're gonna use the tip of it for the most part to make the trees and the leaves. I am taking the same dark green, so that is equal parts blue and yellow. I'm 
then dip of black and a little small dip of white. Nothing too crazy here. Still a dark green. Gives it a bit of shadow, right? From the snow, it looks like everything's shadowed and a really deep green underneath. Okay. So you can see the, the tree roughly. It almost is like it's behind it, just a bit coming up right around, I think, here. Yeah. There. And then it just comes down just alongside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in just a little bit on the side here, right next to my barn, so I don't go into the barn. You can see I went a little bit on the side there too. Just be careful, you don't wanna go all the way outlining it, you just wanna put a little bit of a mark here. Just a nice fill, so that's a nice little barrier. Me too. I'm also from Ontario, Canada. Okay. So let's show with um, this. Let's show with this brush first. So on the very corner, if you're not a fan of using like one brush for everything, you can switch to a detailed brush and do this, you know, little taps with the detailed brush to get little branches and leaves coming down. But I also, I can do this, and I know you can too with the corner of your, your medium brush. You just do like little taps, little a couple taps in the middle like this coming down. And then you can go right in the middle side to side and just angle it down. So you're just going down. So it looks like it's heavy. The, the weight of all the snow is dropping the leaves down and they're no longer as straight. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm just going a little bit wider as I go towards the bottom. Now, for your fan brush, I am going to pretty much generously coat it. This is not the best of fan brushes, but it'll still do the job. Um, you can use, again, the corner. You can just use little taps with the corner and edges of your brush. But also, you can just use a full width. and just It naturally angles the branches down. I'm just going to tap. And of course I want to make sure and just go over the middle really well to fill in that middle part. So I like to just give it a little bit of a edge here, just going and extending, just following that little extensions. See, to make it look like there's a little bit of a more leafiness coming on the ends and it's just all filled into the middle. And it's stopping right around where that hill, that hill is right here. And you can always just make it wider. It's easier to make wider than it is to try to shrink it. You can't really shrink it, actually. It's not going to work out very well. All right, so I'll leave that, giving it a, making sure the middle is very leafy. Okay, so I've washed this off. And I'm gonna do my second coat in my barn while I'm waiting. If you don't have to, you don't need to, only if you have a transparency issue. You have an issue with the background showing through a bit, it's looking a bit pinkish, maybe add a touch of black or a touch of yellow will give it a more true deep Christmas red color.
There, I think that's pretty dark. There. So I'm just checking who is with me, who is ready for the next step. And I'll let you know what our next step is. Um, we're going to work on the tree that's on the side because it's completely out of the way and it gives time for this to dry. We don't want to mess around with any red because things turn pink really fast. Same with the green. The green will just spread everywhere if we try to do anything with that as well. And in terms of brushes for that tree that's on the very right side, I'm going to use my medium and my detailed brush for that. You don't have to change your water. We can use the same dirty water because it's going to be mostly in gray. There's, um, it's going to be in a dark gray, and then later on we're going to put some snow into it. All right, let's get some black and white mixed together. Get a dark gray. So two parts black, one part white, something like this. Then, again, I'm just flattening it down, keeping my brush not too overly coated, but a little dip of water as well. Then we're going to plant our tree, not, so remember this was, you can actually top up on this line here if you want to distinguish this hill a little bit more. It's an idea, a little bit above that line. So I think I'm gonna go right around here, pretty close to the edge. I'm just gonna press pretty firmly with the tip of the brush straight on it, not flat. I mean, you could go flat, but if your brush is pretty wide, you might regret it. I'm just gonna do this and I'm just going to, so right around this section, a couple inches above these trees here, I'm going to start thinking about doing a branching off to the side. And I turn my brush to press very light. So if you press very light, you get much lighter lines, whereas you press really hard, it just naturally gets much thicker. So there, wider trunk. And keep it pretty, press pretty hard, then start lifting and pulling away, and then it gets super thin. So let's do it again. This time I'm going to press from down here, and then I'm just going to press a little bit lighter and go out somewhere else. So now it looks like sort of like a Y shape. See? Maybe a little bit lower. I'm going to branch out over here or here. I think now we have some interest going on. Press a little bit harder from within the tree and then just keep it nice and thin. I haven't switched to my detailed brush yet, but I will very shortly. It will, it will come to a point in when we're making this, we need to switch to a detailed brush. You can just branch off as much as you like for as long as you can before you have to switch your detailed brush. Usually you want to switch to it when you want really thin branches and shorter ones.
You have to be careful with this brush too. With a flat brush, if you start turning it too much, it gets really thick because of you know the width of it. That's just the only problem. Okay. So I think this is around the time. Yeah, I'll switch to my detailed brush now. Okay, I have lots of branches going on. You'll see again. So it's going up about halfway, or maybe a little bit higher. I'm starting to branch out and do some Y shapes going this way and that way. And don't forget about off page over beyond on the right. So there's life beyond the canvas there. Water, grab my dark gray. And what I'm going to do is just press within the branch and then just kind of flick it out. You have to keep reloading with water and paint. So branch and just kind of flick it out. Out. And if it overlaps, perfect. Got it. I'm not doing straight sticks. I'm doing kind of like soft bends. So all you're doing, you're not doing like a, a stick like that. So you see that? random awkward line. I'm not doing that. I'm avoiding that. I'm trying to give it a little bit of a soft bend. But we're not overdoing that. Just avoiding doing straight up sticks and trying to go with the flow and groove and direction that the branches are already going. So if they're going out and up, usually your branches are going to follow suit. And there, just going all over the place. You can do shorter branches, kind of look like wishbones in a way. And then just filling all the space, a lot of space. I think I have a good enough fill here with branches. There's a lot going on, so I think I'll leave that. Well, thanks, Joe. And once that is done, you can just add um, a bit of a light, light gray here. So just pull some more white in with a smidge of that dark gray. It's just mostly, definitely mostly white. A bit of water. With your detailed brush, you just do a couple streaks, you know, coming up from the very left side just follow it up a little bit nothing too crazy we have snow that's going to be um going into all the little crevices here so just do a couple streaks on that side and you should be fine you can always go back with your dark gray super easy to do And I am just seeing who is ready to go back to the barn and do some interest, like just uh, adding in like the window here, putting some stuff on here, eh, if it's dry, 
me see if my tree is dry. Actually, maybe we'll put the snow on the tree. So let's do that first and we'll give the red extra drying time. We don't want to make pink. Having a little bit of light green mixed with your white is okay. If your green is slightly damp, it will be fine. It kind of adds a bit more depth into it anyways with a bit of green. I'm going to add another branch coming up over here. Yeah. So if you really liked your fan brush, you can stick to the same kind of technique with your fan brush. It's just, you have to be careful. You have to work around the barn a little bit. However, I do like using my, my bright brush. It just, so versatile, it can do almost anything. And you can change your water if you need to at this point, if you want fresh water for the white, but I did not change my water. So I still worked with it without changing my water. So we're going to grab plain white on the side. You can take a nice coating, a little bit of a generous amount of white on the brush. So switch to your detailed brush if you need to do the top part first. Just a couple little dabs. I'm trying to leave little bits of gaps. It's almost like you're trying to follow on the edge there on top of any branches you see. Just kind of pile it in, just dab, dab, dab. Just like blob it in. And then in the middle, just a couple blobs to make it look like there's some in the middle of the tree. Don't forget the other side has to be on both sides. Use the tip of it again. See, I see a branch here and just blob it in, bring it in a bit, leave a bit of a gap, dab some in the middle. And it is picking up a little bit of my green, but it's still, it's still okay. It looks like snow for the most part and it has a little bit of a light green hue, which adds to the depth of it. It's kind of nice. basically to the bottom. And there you go, you have a snowy tree. So white on my detail brush, just in case you need to touch up on anything to make it more snowy at the top. It generally collects more snow up there anyway, because it's the highest point. If you're trying to be very technical. And you can take some white, just like we did up here. Remember that white that we put below the trees, the forest in the background? You can do the same thing just about here. And yeah, just go and that kissing thing I was telling you about, just slightly touch and kiss the bottoms of your tree and barn.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on putting the barn uh, rooftop here and working on some details because we can't do the other tree. Of course, that has to be the very last thing we do. Actually, the chicken's going to be the last thing in the snow, but the barn we want to focus on. I'm just seeing it's still a little tiny bit. It's pretty dry, but let's focus on the rooftop. And you can use your detailed brush first before you use your medium brush. Either one is fine. If you start with plain white, nicely coat it. All you have to do is from this top, just level it off. See, straight across. Don't do anything weird or fancy. Just do that and you'll be fine. All right, so all you have to do is just outline. Nice line here, just on the outer edge of it. If you go over top of your red, it's fine. It's just going to shrink and make things look skinnier. It's going to make your barn look thinner. So if you went too wide, maybe you do want to go within the red. So I'm going to see this point right here, with the end of your triangle. That is just going to go straight across like that and just fill this all in. It's going to be like the top part of the roof where most of the snow is collecting and pure white, basically. Then I took, it, it might not matter to you, but it depends on how you drew this out. If you take some white in a touch of your gray or just a touch of black, you can get that off white gray color. When you go along here again and you go down, basically, just along the side, everywhere else, up and down here with the just parallel to um, that trapezoid we did. Just go like that. You're not going to see much of this, so it probably doesn't even matter. And up and down here. So you can see all the crevices. So if I put this line here too, you can kind of get the gist of what's going on. But again, this is the above and beyond technique. If you want more details, maybe your tree is not covering your whole barn. You can see more of the shape of your barn and it looks awesome. It gives it a bit more shadow when you do a bit of a gray, especially down here on the side. So I just fill that in just to be safe because when you make your tree, you could make it um, maybe more off to the side you don't want it to come in. Maybe you do want it to cover your barn. So I'm going to take more of my white with my flat brush here. I'm just going to outline, just do a nice, sharp, crisp outline all around the barn. Plain white. You could do a second coat. And the reason, this is more of a frame. So I'm going to do the other side. It's going to, you can see it in here, all of that framing around. It gives it a sharp look. So I'm going to do the same here. So I'm gonna do a second coat after this when it's all dry. You can do it at the end. You can do it whenever you have time. It's all good. So don't forget the other side, just along the roof and then just down right across there. This is where we're doing some bits of detail work, but all the details really make it look just awesome, pretty and all that stuff. I'm taking my detail brush. So just black, a little bit of water. And I am giving it a shadow. Just following that rooftop, just press, go right underneath that white. You can press a little bit harder on the right side. So it looks like so you can see a bit more of that angle. And you can just leave it like that, or you can do a really 
and continue it. Just do a little bit of a thin one towards the other side. And this same on the edge. So got some crazy kids up there. Um, in just a second, probably like a minute, I'm going to start with placing my door right in the middle so that I can really you can put your windows afterwards and you can center your door how you want it. And it makes sense. You don't want to put windows and then go, oh, I have so little space for doors or it's not centered. Might drive you nuts, but we'll do the door first. We'll center the window here and all the other little things. Okay, let's continue on. I still haven't done my second coat of the white on the rooftop, but I'm going to yeah, you keep using my detail brush. I'm gonna put that stripe just going across from end to end here. The dividing line. And just let that dry before I do a second coat. So I'm just cleaning it up with some red. Okay. Okay, let's take some more white, a bit of water, and we're gonna make our little diamond shape. So we're basically mimicking that triangle up here in a way, just a little bit smaller. So we're gonna do the triangle and then make your diamond here too, just upside down. Try to keep it a bit centered. So this goes, when this goes across, it kind of meets with the other end and it makes sense to you. So once you get that, what we need to do is fill it in with black. And I'm just filling it in so I'm happy with the shape, size. You can go 
into your white a little bit if you want to shrink the thickness of your white. Just make it a little bit thinner overall. Okay, and I'll come back to that. It has to be fully outlined in white um, when that's a bit more dry. <laughs> Where you have cats fighting. It's great. So I was saying that the windows are, they're gonna be black, but we're gonna do them right after we do the door. So about center, just think about the amount of space you want to have for your windows on the side. I'm going to do something like this and this. I think this is hmm, maybe a little bit more on the side. So I'll just fill that in with some more red. Yeah. This is coming up a fair bit. It's pretty tall. And just something straight across here, just slightly going outside that rectangle. Mine always looks like a little bit of a mess at first until I get it how I want. Let me just fill that in. I hope everyone's having fun with this and it's easy to follow along. Thanks guys for the comments and nice words. So I have my rectangle there. See, I'm just I'm just doing the the line going across. I'm just slightly outside. Just a little bit like that. And then in the middle, I'm going to try and press uh, fairly, just a little bit harder because you can see in the original, right in the middle, I put a thin black line, which I have a nice little cheat for you guys if you're looking to do your line work is maybe not the best or you don't have a brush that thin. You can use a Sharpie marker or something like that to get that in the middle if you want to put that extra dividing line at the black. Just an idea. Yeah, kids are going to go to bed soon. They're just really hyper. Okay, so I'm continuing. End to end. There we go. And these are all my first coats. Don't freak out. You don't need to get everything right the first time. You can do some cleanup. Just let it dry before you do your touch-ups.
Okay, and let's do the windows on the side, giving everything a chance to dry. So I'm going roughly up around this height at the top of the door. You can see that's where it is. So you can do something like that. You can just do a thin triangle or square, whatever works for you. Fit it in there, fill it in. I'm gonna do the white afterwards because white, you can put outside of your black rectangle or square, or you can put it within to shrink it. There's a lot you can do. Same with over here. You can try to keep it pretty much the same. So if I go across, I can see it's about the same height and level. There. So after when you're done that, we're not going to do the wreath yet. Actually, it's something that you want to do when you're happy with everything. This is where you can do your second coat. So by the time you're done all of this white stuff, except around your windows, because that has to dry, you can do a second coat or maybe you're onto a third coat just to sharpen up these framing bits on the outside, get it nice and white all sharp looking. And same with right here. Maybe I'll use my flat brush. Get a nice straight line. Oh, Vicky, I'm sure you did just fine.
So if you want to go a little bit of a above and beyond for more details, I'm just taking some black and you can just go right underneath the, the top part of the frame door. You just put some black, just put a line right there. Adds a bit more of a shadow and you can just sharpen everything up with some black outlining. You can go all along the edges of the white or um, anywhere you want to. Like this side of the door. And directly into the middle. So that's where you can do your Sharpie later when it's fully dry. You just have to be very careful. You just like lightly kind of tap, barely press. It's almost like you're feathering just a little. And that should do it for the most part. All those tiny little things, I think, add to the whole look. And now I'm going to shape around the window at the top and the windows here. So going directly in the middle, right here, just a line. And the same thing on the other side, right in the middle. So a nice X going through. And just remember, when you're doing the white outlining on your windows down here, you can go either within the black or outside. If you go outside the black, they look whiter. If you go within the black, they look thinner overall. I kind of go a little bit in between, just directly over top of the black and just outside of it a bit.
So I'm just doing a bit more of the framing on the windows, putting more of a window pane look. Um, yeah, do whatever you want in here. Just doing a couple lines going across and then one vertically right down the middle for each of them. And then we're going to put just a little bit of snow at the top of the windows, which is a nice idea to put anywhere else too if you see some opportunities. Yeah, thanks Vicky. So yeah, I'm taking a bit of white on my detailed brush and just kind of blobbing it, making a bit of a pile in the center, just blob it a little bit higher up and it's gonna look a bit like snow. You just have to blob, blob, blob. And blah, 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 a little bit of a pile back down, gives it a heaping pile of snow. You don't need to overdo it. And you could put more snow like on the top of the door if you're feeling it, but I kind of like the simplicity of it. It's pretty nice. All right, so just checking to see where we're at and how we're doing, because that was a lot of the uh, more intricate stuff pretty much done. Then we can go back to this tree, add in the snow there on all the little crevices that you see that are pointing down, coming inwards where snow would collect. You know, you can see it on your tree where you would put it. You can put as you can put a lot, you can put very little. It really depends on how snowy you want the scenery to be. And after that, we're going to put our wreath in here because we're going to put some green here and we're going to work on our last tree, chicken. So most of the work is done. <laughs> Someone's saying the snow is better than one outside. Yeah, because it looks so <laughs> untouched, clean, and you don't have to sit in it. I would say... Maybe your detailed brush is probably best, but you can use your medium, um, yeah, this medium flat brush. You can use that too. It's good for getting like little lines, for example, on the ends. Just like a little bit of snow maybe on the ends of some of your branches, just like that. So that's an idea. There's so many ways you can do this and ultimately it's up to you what you prefer. You could just do thin line here and follow it up just to give it a layer of snow. You can also use your detailed brush. And you can see I'm just gonna pile it, just blob it in. You can use a generous amount right in here. Fill it up and dab, dab, dab. Go up a little bit higher on one side or something like that. Let's do it again. Blob, blob, blob. And yeah, so it's kind of like in the more bigger branch areas where they go a bit more generous. But for the branches out here, I don't have to put as much work, just a little bit here and there. So the good thing with this technique too is 
you can go right into, just slightly touch the branches a little bit so it looks like it's overlapping the branches and you don't have um, your background showing through. You, so what I mean is it's going over top of your branch ever so slightly and it looks like it's layering over top. There, I think I did a fair amount here. Don't really need to add any more. There. So dark gray again for any little, see right here, maybe don't need that much snow covering my branch. Just to do some touch-ups really. And of course you want a little heaping pile at the bottom collected. And it also takes care of the awkward little spot here where your tree is. All you're gonna do is just blob in some paint, however you want to, just around the tree. Kind of trail it away here, you know, something like that. You can even add a little bit of a gray color at the bottom to give it a bit of a shadow. So it's just a little bit extra black to give it a bit of a shadow at the bottom but anyway so I just put up just like some blobs of white and you have a snow pile below your tree and it covers the bottom so you don't have to make it look like um it's going into this I don't know it just looks like the snow is falling down here and you don't have to worry about that bottom of your tree Well, that would be fun, Vicky. That's great. All right, so I'm just about to, um, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to start my wreath here. We're still using the detail brush. We can grab our really dark green that we use that we've been using. So grab that. So let's center it again. Just go right below, make your circle. See how it's like touching the bottom, just above where that white is and just dabbing. Just dab, 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 make it as 
as thick as you want, as long as there's a little kind of like a donut hole in the middle. Right, and it can overlap a little bit on the top and bottom. It's okay. And when you dab, it gets a kind of fluffy, that wreath type look that we want, which is perfect. So what I'm going to do is add in a little bit more yellow and white here. Gives it a bit of a lime kind of green look. See that? And you can dab just in the middles to give it a bit of a highlight, um, a lighter green, and the edges kind of stay that darker green for a shadow. So you've added depth without having to add much depth. Look at that. It looks like a pretty awesome wreath so far. And we will be adding in the bow. You can add the snow on top. It'll be awesome. It'll be good. <clears throat> so the next thing which i think i'm going to yeah actually we can start our tree we can do the second tree here we can work on that and i'm going to use my medium and my large because it's a very large tree i'm just taking my large brush taking that same green if you have to make more equal parts blue and yellow dip of black little tiny smidge of white just to so it's not too black looking it gives it a bit of an earthy green tone flatten down your brush you can stick to your smaller brush depends on the size that you're working with i'm just going to go right on the side here come straight down something around here see it's right in the foreground that's what i want So feel free to use your fan brush, use your large, I'm using the corner just like I did before. And just kind of go in the middle a little bit so it starts off really thin, then use it straight on. And you do need to fill in the middle really well. You don't want this evergreen, you don't want to have too much gaps. You want to give it a healthy look, I guess. And all that snow will be piled in too. And I'm just going to angle down once again, all my branches, just fill all of this side. You may as well just fill it all in. Dab, dab, dab. Give it that texture while you're doing it. You just have to go a little bit wider. Try not to invade your barn too much. I know you work so hard on it. Um, so someone's asking about if I've painted the all four seasons. Yes, I have. It's actually on this channel. If you, you might have to look through our videos, but we do. Um, maybe if you type seasons or four seasons, you'll see it pop up. It's there. I think I have about two of them. Maybe I think there's about two of them. Yeah. And it was four seasons. If you're looking for more paintings, ideas, four seasons were of a antlers from a deer with the different seasons going around as if it was a bunch of tree branches. It was nice. It took a little bit of a, took some time to do, but yeah, check it out if you want to paint. If you want to paint something like that. Okay, so see, I'm just extending. Just extending this out. It has to overlap my barn either way. Just let it do that. I'm just trying not to go too crazy. And it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical because it's a tree. It's not perfect. filling in that middle. There we go. So I'm going to put leaves on top. Or sorry, what am I saying? I'm going to put the snow on top when that's a bit more dry, but good thing we did. Now this is my fan brush. See, so you can just add in some of that little dabs just for fun. Okay. 
All right. And I'm just seeing, since that has to dry, perfect time to work on our chickens. <laughs> you can do a lot of chickens. You don't have to do chickens. Um, but yeah, chickens, they're so, they're much easier than you probably think they are. And they're kind of, they kind of remind me of the shape of a boat. <laughs> We'll start that in a minute. Probably need just another minute before we do that. So I don't know if, um, is everyone up to speed with me? If I go, I don't know how fast I really go. I'm just touching this up while I wait a minute. Okay, someone's asking about the chickens, the colors that we're using. We are going to be using mostly gray and um, yeah, just gray colors, black and white, a little bit of red for the head and for the beak, a light yellowy color. So with our detailed brush, get together a, um, hmm, what should we start? You know what, a dark gray. Yes, let's do a dark gray. Dark gray. We have a dark gray here. Just adding little bits of black until I'm happy with how dark it is. A little bit of water. So the shape. Let's start with this like middle chicken here. So it's a little bit higher up overall. And the shape, like I said, is, reminds me a bit of like a boat or maybe a bit of like a banana. I'm just kind of swoop it up, dip it down, and then swoop it up again, something like this. But also this, this the end of the tail, I'm just doing a couple little feathery bits for the end of the tail. All you have to do is from here is just kind of flick it out even towards the bottom, a couple little streaks. Let's go a little bit closer. Kind of do little flicks and then see the head. You know how they say chicken brain? Well, that's going to stay pretty thin like that. And then it's going to get into a nice chunkier body here. So it's going to stay thin up here. And it's just going to get thicker Whoop, right here. And you can just see that little belly at the bottom. Just dip it down a little bit. And I'm just adding two little stumpy bits at the end. That's like getting into their chicken legs before it gets to white. So you can see those little stumps there, just two right directly in the middle. You'll see that's in the middle on the other chickens over here. So it's kind of almost coming straight. It's not straight across, but it definitely is coming up a little bit higher up into the middle. So as a slight swoop, but most of the middle is filled in. So we can do this again. Let's take a bit more water and paint with our dark gray. 
Let's do another one. There's another one over here. Just doing its thing. Let's do another one. So lower down, you can go a bit bigger if you want to. And again, swoop it up. Do a couple little feathery bits coming out. And you can even just do like a bit of a tail this time, a little hook almost. Keep it thin up here, just press and then whoo, streak it across. And a little stump, little stumpies. <laughs> Here we go. It already looks like a chicken when we haven't even made the chicken. It's pretty great. And I'll do my last one. This guy is going this way. Then I wash this brush off. After I wash it off, you can take plain white here on your detailed brush, touch of water, plain white. And we're gonna start with the first chicken. We're just gonna do a little swoop or a bit of like a wing coming across. A couple little streaks there. Now you have all of these, what looks like layering and you didn't even do anything. It just makes it look like you have that wing on the side. Same over here, a couple little streaks up along the back. And same with over here. So you'll also need plain white for the little legs, just those little sticks. Just uh, little extensions. You don't have to go too long because they have chicken legs and also they're in the snow. And before we start any of the little faces, the, the heads with the little beaks, just take um, a bit of a gray, not too dark. So you're going, you're adding more white to that darker gray you had. And you can actually add in a little smidge of blue. You can add in a smidge of blue and just along the bottom, just do a little line. If it's too dark, add a bit more white to it. Just do a couple little streaks for a bit of a shadow on all of them. A couple streaks, just right below the legs, cut it off. And it looks like you have shadows for your chickens. You can go back to your lighter blue color, just blend it out just a little bit if needed. I'm just going to grab a little bit more white here.
Okay, so if you grab a light blue, you go a bit lighter than what you did down here. You just go along just a little bit and with your medium brush and it kind of tones it down, right? So it looks like it's just a slight shadow, especially if you're not a big fan of what you did or maybe you went a little bit too heavy handed. You're just looking for a way to keep it a little bit lighter overall. So it's not too dark. Take a step back, look at your painting. We're going to add in the little heads pretty much right now. And that is just pure red with a touch of black. You have to be careful. You don't want it to look black. So if you have the right red, you have like a Christmas or crimson red, just use that or add a smidge of black to your red to get a similar color like we did here. And the heads are, <laughs> I mean, let's start with this one here. Just, oop, there's some water attached. I'm just gonna do, um, just gotta soak up some of that water. I don't want it to spread. So all you're gonna do, just think of it like at the very top, you're just doing a little ball. You're not making the beak and just going back a little bit for that top of the head, along the neck a little. Let me just bring it down a little bit, just kind of blob it in. Don't go too big. Just go right, just cover the top of that neck a little. Do a bit of a round ball and just kind of flick it back a little bit, almost like a crest at the top. You can round it the face out just a little bit before it gets to the beak. Just keep taking a step back and just seeing if it's too big or if it's, you know, you need to make it a bit bigger. I like to start off a bit smaller and then decide. Just a little bit of a ball here and there. So while that red is drying, this is where we start putting in uh, details onto our wreath with snow, some red, like the bow. You can add in with that same red on your brush. You can add little dots of red here, if you can see it. Like little dots for some holly or something like that. Can't really see mine. Maybe I'll do a different color this time. Let's just do a yellowy orange color. So a bit of yellow and red mixed together. This is gonna be different. Something like that. Just add a couple dots. Ornaments. There. Could be lights. And when you're making the bow on your wreath, if you're making one, you have to start off, unfortunately, you have to start off with some white added to your dark red. So it's gonna look a bit purpley pink. So that's what we want. I'm just doing this, a little bit of white, it looks a bit like a pinkish purple. And then you can add it in and do a second coat of pure red. So if I just, okay, so you can't really actually see too much of the detail because it's 
It's more of a blob. Let me just show you on another like piece of paper with shape like. So it's kind of shaped like this. You just do a little line and you go like rectangle or something like, oh, sorry. You just do a little line and you go out like this, out like that. Very basic because it's so tiny, you don't need to do too much and then like press down for that. Almost like you're making a bit of a triangle shape down here. And you just fill it in for now. That is essentially what I've done. And you can of course round it out. So you can do more of a round looking one instead of a, a square. And for our next step, we are going to be going into our chickens and making the beaks. So that's gonna complete the look. They're gonna look a bit more realistic. You'll see with your detailed brush. And I actually, you can use yellow and white. You can use yellow, white, and a dip of red. Give it a, just mostly white. Okay, take a dip of yellow with it and add a dot of this red you have here. You could also just use white if you wanted. So again, pull my white to the side, take a dot of yellow and a little bit of this red I had here. And it gets it a bit yellowy, golden, almost orange looking. So right from within the face, just do a mini triangle. If you're finding that you can't see it all too well, I actually need to wash this off and I'll just put some red around it. Maybe your head needs to be a little bit bigger. You can do a slight outline in some black. You can just slightly outline it. All right, so it may have gone a little bit bigger in the head. And now I can do a white on the tree. So I'm gonna take quite generous amount on my medium brush. Start on the very edge and just pile it in, just blah, blah, blah. Just kind of stop at some point. Just bring it in to the tree and towards the middle. And when 
you leave a bit of a gap, it gives it more layering. So if I leave a bit of a gap, it just looks like you have layers around the tree with snow. And it's not just all one line of, of snow coming up from the side. There, lots and lots of snow. It all just comes together at the end. Looks like a very snowy, snowy tree. So how are we doing? We're almost done. Yeah, the chickens are rather skinny. Yes, yeah, so actually, I just can show you right now. If you have what looks like skinny chickens, so you just have to, you can make them bigger. And I'll show you how to do that. Sometimes, like, you don't realize how skinny they are until you're done with the heads and you're like, oh. So what you're going to do is you're just going to make this a little bit thicker here. So you're just going to extend this up so it's a bit more flat at the top. It's not as rounded and thin overall, just grabbing a bit more black. And same over here. And same over here. Let me just extend the top of them. Yeah. <laughs> You'll know if your chickens look too skinny when you take a step back after and you make the head, you can just make them a little bit more plump. Okay. So back to um, the wreath. I'm doing my second coat of red. So you're just gonna take plain red. You can take also, uh, black if you need to define it this little these little minor details they're just a bit nitpicky at this point but like i said it adds to the whole look of your painting so if you take some black and just lightly outline I like this this little circle in the middle lightly outline it give that shape of your bow. So you're just going around the ends here, the middle and just rounding it out on the sides. Perfect, you can leave it pink, you can do your layer of red. Um, I kind of like it like that. It kind of it stands out from the red from the barn. And I just have to put my snow on the top of my wreath. So you're just gonna lightly press with the tip of your detailed brush, just little taps along the side about halfway down. Then you're gonna get a little bit more generous. Just go more on the top part. Try not to go and cover your whole entire wreath too much. You just make it a nice highest, lots of dabs, highest points around the middle. And then it just gets less and less along the side. And same with your bow. So you're just going to dab just along the top here, slightly overlap the top of your bow. And you should have a snowy looking wreath. Looks like it's got a lot of snow.
adding a little bit with my fan brush. Anyway. <laughs> Chickens do look a little cold. I did go a little bit bigger with their heads for this part. That's okay. I'm going to put a little dot for the eyes. Put it just the tip right here if you want to. Yes, thanks for joining. So we just have to do the snow on, well, actually everywhere, just everywhere overall. That's really easy. Take the back handle of, you know, a medium brush or large or small, dip it in your white paint. So I'm just taking the back of it, dipping it in and go nuts. Do as much as you want, just go everywhere because it's going to look like snow like that. And you can show your results on our Facebook page underneath our calendar. We love seeing results. People like posting it under our calendar. Um, we don't really have a specific spot or group to do it. So that's where, that's where we kind of collectively done it. Or in the event itself, you can go into the event and post it there. But the calendar will definitely be seen. It's pretty great. So you just go to the Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham Region. Um, the, it's pinned to the top. Our calendar is usually pinned to the top, and you can add a photo there. And yeah, again, hopefully this was easy to follow along, not too hard. A good, simple winter painting. And it's good for Christmas cards too. So if you're thinking Christmas cards, you can fit pretty much anything onto a Christmas card. There, I think I'll stop there. Yeah, thanks, Vicki. Thanks for painting along with me, guys. And have a great rest of your day. Same with the holidays. It's a fun, relaxing painting. I like it. <clears throat> I don't think I'm missing anything else. Yep, it's all done. So maybe you'll paint along with me again. I'm doing this, I'm doing another one, not the same painting, a different painting. It's another winter painting coming up on Thursday on YouTube for free. So you can follow along with that. It's like a forest. It's got blue and yellow. It's a forest with a, um, a deer in the background. So yeah, join me for that. Okay. Take care, everyone. Happy painting. Bye.